<laughs> well, that just told me I was live, so good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to a fairly rainy, damp, sunny, wet, but nice-ish Sussex, West Sussex. Uh, it's just about thrown everything at me in the last half an hour. I've uh, had to come in, shut the door because there was because uh, it was raining so hard and heavy. And I've just looked out a few seconds ago, and the sun's out. So yes, so welcome everyone to a Tuesday live with me. So let me bring in my ear maggot for the day. You'll know who it is as soon as he opens his mouth. But before then, hello everybody. <laughs> welcome to the morning. Uh, yeah, we just got the rain that you got rid of. All oh, right, okay. So, um, yeah, we're both in West Sussex, so not not that far from each other. 20, 20 minutes at the most, quarter of an hour, twenty minutes away from. Yeah, each something other. like that. Yep, yep. So it's, it's taken that long to get down here. So, mm. well, it doesn't seem to be any wind today. So, no. right, it's going to be, or it's possibly going to be a longish one today. Might be closer on hour and three quarters because it's a fairly big lump of wood. Let me go and uh, take Andy off the screen for a second and right. put uh, a camera on so you can see what we're proposing to turn. One, two, three, four. Is it that one? No, it's not. No, I'm still on screen. So. You're still on screen. Okay. Should be four. One, two. Three, four. Should be that one. It's not. Okay. The cameras are playing up. So we go down in order then. And I'll find one that works. I think the Oh that's that's one of your views. I think that's that one's a better one. A better one. I think yep. that's a better one. Right, I'll tell you. Drop Andy That's off. I'm, I'm That's gone. That's it. He's gone. So this is what we're going to be turning, guys. And it is a mere 22.5 diameter by 3.25 inches thick. So it's a, a reasonable lump of wood. Now I need to do it justice as best I can. So the only way, which one we on? We're on this one. The only way I can work this is I'm turning off. I'm turning in reverse, which I can do on this lathe because I've got a chuck that I have secured to the shaft with three grub screws. So I'm quite happy and quite safe to turn at it will turn in reverse. And I quite often sand in reverse, and I do various bits and pieces, but 99% of this will be in reverse, I think, because I just can't get close. The bed bars are about three-eighths of an inch away. So let me get myself organised. Shall I tell you who's in? Andy can read out the distractions. I see daughter's in. Hi, okido. She is safety glasses on. Um, so. it's supposed to be 20 people in, but I've only got about 15 names, so I apologize if I miss anybody. I should be reading it from the participants list on YouTube. So, Brent Beecroft is in, Chris Dodds, Circular Wood by Keith. Some somebody's crept in, yeah. Uh, Clive Rogerson, Gerard the, the French Turner, John S. Casting, Lawrence Vigasia, Robert Dolman, Robert Dubwood. Terry Hooper, the Linikins, Tommy's Workshop, and Woodworm Paul. As I say, apologies if I missed you. Just put a shout in, and I'll uh, I'll catch it. Right, I've just turned up the speed, so we've actually gone through the initial wobble, and I've got a little bit of speed on there, and it's actually running quite true. So I don't want to go too fast because the peripheral speed, the outside speed is a lot faster than two or three revs in the middle. So let's see how this turns and see what sort of... You can hear the 
chantering of the toe. Uh, you can guess the speed it's running. Robbo Robertson's in. Good day. Good day, Robbo. And Andrew Wivy Woodshed is in. Welcome to everyone. Thank you for coming over and uh, watching me. I'm here. Amateur perform on the live. Uh, Clive Rogerson missed what type of wood it was. It's you, English you. I thought I was going to say that, but yeah, I wasn't I quite sure when, it's, when it came to it. Oh, you've got your glasses. Oh, oh, I fogged them up. So I can't oh, you fogged see. them up. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's different. I'm going to creep up the volume a bit. It's probably a good idea if you can see, isn't it? It's useful on this. Yeah. Uh, I've got to, I've got to the second wobble, so I can't go any higher. So I'm going to I'm changing to a uh, the big one inch American or three quarter English bowl gouge. <laughs> Sidley sixty one is in. I can actually stall a lathe, although this is a two-horse motor, through taking a too heavy a cut on the edge, it will slow down. His cabin's in. Said, damn, almost missed this. <laughs> you haven't missed it. I've only just started. Yeah, well, you haven't missed a lot. Only six minutes in. So. It's a 21 inch piece of that uh, of you. Um, this is a 10 mil cut I'm taking. So I'm not going lightly with it, but uh, I'm letting the wood cut rather than forcing the wood onto the chisel. Handles well down so it's more of a sheer cut than a conventional cut with the tool level. But, uh, I, think I might want a box to stand on. Running out of floor space already. Turning by Barry. Good afternoon, Barry. Good afternoon, everybody. All I'm doing with my left hand is literally holding the chisel on the tool rest. Let me come a little bit lower with the camera as I can. So I'm just literally holding it on the tool rest. I'm not pushing it. The tool is determining the speed it wants to cut. A 
question from Woodworm Paul. Keith, why are you turning in reverse? <laughs> because the tall rest isn't long enough to reach that side of the wood. And I've only got about 10 mil, three-eighths of an inch clearance between the outside, back outside of the wood and the bed bars. No other reason. I think that's good enough reason. Making a better life has just come in. Yeah, I die. I it's could. Popping. Let me turn this off for a second. I was discussing this with Andy before we started. I, I could slide the headstock along to the tailstock end, to the right-hand end, take off my banjo and put that on the left hand end swing this round so it just missed the bed bars on the normal left hand side and work off the conventional way but uh, that's hard work i don't see why i should do that for the sake of uh, that i can turn it but there's a quite a big inclusion there there's a bit of a bark inclusion just there you can see uh, there's a, a heavy knot just there, which also comes out there. There's another knot there. And the last knot is there. So I've sort of given myself a bit of a challenge. So whether it gets finished today, we'll see. But uh, I'm going to keep going until I... I wear myself out. That's brilliant sunshine here now. Very changeable. Yeah. I shut the door because it was a bit cold. So I'm changing between two chisels. The little one's a bit too uh, too grabby. Well, the little one, it's uh, a 5.8 bar on there, so it's a half inch bowl gouge. Whereas this big inch one is more man for the job. It's a lot heavier handle. It takes the bounce out of the cut. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Douglas Mungham's here. Good afternoon, Douglas. Hello, Douglas. And Robbo was talking about the arrangements for, for turning backwards and saying that uh, you'd have the camera would be in the wrong place if you did all that, moved everything to the other end. Yeah, I'm fairly it's not, it's another Robbo, reason. <laughs> yeah, that I could quite easily do it because my cameras are actually on a bit of 22 mil copper above me. Um, since I was a plumber, it seems the right thing to use. So I could change them relatively easy. They're not fixed, but they are fixed. Robo's saying that's an excellent angle for the camera. I must admit, it does give you a very good view when you're turning backwards. Oh, I've never really considered that because this is the first time that I've really looked at it from this way. And it Flicks would... Very, everything Sorry, on the bench... <laughs> Flick's wood turning and timber creations is in. Hello, Flick. Thanks for coming over. And uh, so we've got two or three in from Australia because that's where Flick's from. That's so right. Yep. Some nice character in through there. You can just about see it on that that's camera angle. 
And uh, Barry, wood turning by Barry says, us plumbers, my cameras are on 22 mil copper tube. Yeah, can't be, Some, can you, mate? <laughs> somebody else with the same idea. Yeah. Mine's, mine's on a piece of 18 mil dowel. Well, I'm a woodworker, so it would be. My, my thoughts for this as I put it up as a farmhouse plate is to have it as a fairly wide <coughs> fairly wide rim on the top but with a fairly decent bowl in it as well so I'm not turning it paper thin I could do, but I'm not. I don't need to prove any points. <clears throat> so I'm looking for a pleasing shape that will show itself off sitting on a fairly large farmhouse style table. <coughs> mm. No good, got to have a drink. <laughs> <coughs> oh, it's dusty. It's very dry, is it? Yes. It's, it's at least 12 years being cut. So, so it's had a bit of time to dry out then. It's had a bit of time to dry out. So I'm cutting. I think you can see the gouge there. I'm cutting at about 10 past. So... That's 12 o'clock, that's 3 o'clock, I'm cutting at about 10 past. So many times I see people going in with the, with the gouge virtually fully open, which can be, to me, a little bit scary. You're also cutting on the rounded but square end, in effect. So with it turned at about between 5 and 10 past, depending on the wood, I can get a, sh a slicing cut onto the nose of the tool. So I'm getting a, a much better cut, although having said that, just there it's tearing out, just there that's tearing out, but I've not put an edge on this yet. Oh, we will need to. But, uh, gonna keep going. I knew something had fallen off. Salvage that chisel. So, right, so that's fully closed, that's fully open, and to me that can be a bit dangerous, so I tend to go in, and that's about 10 to, 10 past, but I'm also at about a 30 degree angle, so I'm well above centre. And you can you hear the noise that that's making against the chatter that that makes, which is why I tend to do it. Robbo says that is the correct angle of attack. Thanks, Robbo. Douglas Mungham says, Keith, how about a mask? Sorry? Douglas Mungham says, Keith, how about a mask? Got one. Can't see it. Oh, I knew you said you were going to, so yep. <laughs> that's why no, I read it. I've got, I've got one on. Yep. I've got the Chestnuts Approved Snood. Plus, I've got the dust extractor running just down there. You can just see the top of it. 
in the picture. Uh, I'm trying to keep as <coughs> safe as I can. Good morning, Greg Alexander. Just come in. <coughs> Doesn't stop me coughing, though. Is that held on a faceplate in the chuck or? No, it's on a um, ring chuck. Ring chuck. Yep. Yeah, I've got the. Seat. I, know you, I know you tend to favour those. So, yeah. Well, the, the beauty for me with those is that you can actually leave them on when you turn it round, so that if you should get a naughty cat and it throw it off. You can remount without too much aggravation. It's a, a method that I use when I'm teaching newbies down in the workshop to do because invariably they'll go in straight in with the tool, stab, oh dear, it's flown off. <laughs> Yeah. Now, we've all been there. I'm not saying they're immune to it. Or well, I'm immune to it. Hell, we've all been there. Gerard was saying, sorry, how wide is it again? 22 and a half inches, Gerard. By three and a quarter. Three and a quarter thick. Fairly substantial piece of timber. It's just about enough for one man to lift onto the uh, shark. Ah, that's why I so the tools decided to loosen in the in the handle. Oh dear, we can do without and, that. Yeah, I wonder why it was tending to twist in my fingers. Uh, it's only two grub screws. Uh, that's them tightened up again. It's the vibration. I might even go and sharpen it in a minute. Feels Rob like was also, with it. also suggesting you could move your tool rest towards the edge. It is stiffer towards the pin and won't vibrate. Yeah, I could do. What I was going to do was just finish this one um, to leave me about three quarters of an inch on the edge, and then I was going to finish off the centre just to yep. just hollow it a fraction. In actual fact, I could do that now because that one really wants resharpening. So I'll use that one. That one's got an edge on it. I'm not sure where it is though. Not the cut that I tend to use a lot, the pull cut. Not the easiest one at a low speed. Let's see if I can get a little bit more. Volume out of it. I don't think it's. I don't think it wants to play ball. That's about the maximum. Okay. So a sheer pull cut. And a sheer push cut. I 
think you can see it. Just about see it bouncing. It's bouncing a bit. It's not too bad. Yeah. No, it's not bad. No, no. Douglas Mungham says, Keith, are you turning a tabletop? Lol. It's a coffee table for four. <laughs> So the nearer I get to the middle, the slower the speed of the wood. So the smaller the cut you can take, the better it becomes. So I've gone over to a quarter inch bell gouge just to take a smaller cut. Not worried about the very middle because I'm going to. Set that up with a uh, ramp, a mortise in the middle. And so that bit will get removed in a minute. Let's see, Let's see what we've got. Still haven't taken that anything off of that that piece. You can see the change in colour. Uh, and this is as rough as it could ever be. Considering the size, it's running remarkably true, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Let's see if I can get a better cut with a smaller chisel. Hi Brent, see you later. Cheers Brent, thanks for stopping by. While I'm relatively quiet and you can't hear it banging, I don't know whether any of you follow Emma the Tiny Turner. That's, uh, she did a live last Saturday. And... In that live, she announced that she was going to be turning a piece of you, which was donated, which was donated by myself. So, seeing how unforgiving this is and hard it is, make yourself lucky that she's only got a 12-inch piece which I roughed down to the right diameter because uh, this lathe would do it. Hers would, or oh, her Hegner, as it was then when I sent it, would struggle a bit. So she's turning a piece of you off the same tree. But the beauty of Emma's is that it's actually full of... Uh, Fred Gulliver's in. Hello, Fred. Hello to everyone else that's stopped by. Interesting question from Clive Rogerson. When running in reverse, is it easy to override muscle memory or do you have to think more about each cut? Uh, I can turn both hands. So it doesn't make a lot of difference to me. I'm sort of ambidextrous, but I can use both. Um, I have to think about it initially. But once you've stood there a few minutes, and you realise that uh, it's no different to sand in the conventional way, clockwise. It's not a problem. For those of you that have used, worked on union graduates at school or universities, wherever. Something quite heavy on that cut just there. You can feel it bouncing. The, you hear it, yeah. Yeah, the union graduate has got a fixed head to it. So you turned up to 
just there. You turn up to about 12 inches in spindle mode inboard. There's just a mass of little knots just across there. So you turn spindle mode inboard, and if you want to do anything bigger, you would put an export external um, faceplate on, which ran in, or the motor ran the same way, but the turning was actually off the in anti anti-clockwise because you were turning outside. So left -hand thread, no isn't it? Yeah, left hand thread. So it's no different to that. And I actually did my first turn in many moons ago on a graduate at school. And I wanted to be greedy and do bowls. So I ended up working outside. I'm going to mark the mortise. Just double check that that is 50. I think it is that one, 52, whatever. No, it's not, it's 70. So just as well I check that. That's 52. And that should be right for the mortise. So normally you would put the left hand point in. <coughs> now I'm going to put the left, the right hand point in and just score it That's somewhere about there. Not a very sharp one. I need to go. That's better. So there's my mark for cutting. Uh, let's make a start with the, the bowl gouge. And I should be going fairly heavy in depth on this mortise. Five or six mil. Rather than the general depth of about three mil, so twice the depth of normal. up you can immediately see I think why it was a bit grabby not right in the middle of it <laughs> yeah. just about see it there there's a dead knot okay. the water scraper works the wrong way but uh, I have enough hanging over the end that I can cut this the right way around carefully. Just scraping this at the correct angle to go a fraction deeper. Thirty-five minutes in, and I haven't even done the bottom yet, which I knew would be 
a time consuming piece but uh, that's going to look quite stunning with three knots in a row there all these little peppy branches here Just have another light clean up. What I tend to do particularly on something this size, if I want to remount it if I have an issue, I've just put the corner of the scraper in the centre to mark it and I've just put two decoration rings on there. I've seen people put four, five, six decoration rings on at uh, the problem with that is you've got to get them all unit equidistant, otherwise it looks terrible. So with only two rings on there, they are equidistant. So, oh, please, Robbo, I can come in to there. No, I was planning on doing that anyway. It's just that... Robbo mentioned it. Bit of flannel from Douglas Mungham. He was uh, you were talking about the the graduate lathe and, and mm. when you were at school. And he says, Keith, you're not that old with twenty one in brackets. <laughs> I wish I was. The rest of the body <laughs> tells me I'm a lot older than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malcolm Douglas has just come in. Hi, Malcolm. As I was half saying and didn't quite finish just now, I don't think. Um, pop over and watch Emma, the tiny turner, this coming is it this Saturday or the Saturday after, when she will be attempting to make a donation bowl for the Southampton's veterans which I think is going to be donated whether it's donated lot or whether it's uh, auctioned on the night or whether something can be set up but that will be a stunning piece I have the history of the wood I have some provenance for it, the same as I have for this piece. What am I? I need to be a bit thinner. Most of you will have heard of the poet Percy Bysshe Shelley, or Bish Shelley, however you want to pronounce it. He is purported to have sat below this very yew tree and composed some of his work. Unfortunately, I wasn't there at the time, so I can't 100% guarantee it, but that is told to me by a fairly reliable source that has passed the information down through the ages. Uh, I know he sat and spent quite a bit of time over at Warner Mill Pond as it was in his day because he was uh, he lived at Broadbridge Heath and the Warner Mill Pond was only a mile and a half from him so for sanctuary and peace and quiet apparently he used to go and sit on the side of the pond and if it was a little bit inclement he'd sit below this as one of the trees there was 
couple of horse chestnut trees just to do some of his scribblings. Uh, like I say, I can't 100% guarantee the truth of that. I've got no reason to disbelieve it. Duncan the Curly Turner has got to go. We'll catch the rest later. Thanks, Richard, Duncan. Richard RJKS, RJK Spinning Wood. Let's hello, everybody. Hi, Keith. What are you turning? Looks like a wheel from the Flintstones. So, well, it could be. And you can always rely on your daughter. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's all gone past. There was a comment about you you not being that old. Oh, Keith, you're not that old from Douglas. That's right. And Linnykins comes in and says, no, he really is Douglas. Yeah. So you can yeah, rely on daughters. He, yeah, and his body's telling him that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, a relatively nice finish off the tool. I haven't got very little tear out. The only tear out I've got is a bit of end grain there. And across there, and right on the very edge, a bit of end grain there. But overall, quite a good finish. Not bad considering so, the grain. Well, the wild grain. It's all over the place, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and so many knots as well. So I've actually cut right through the centre of a knot just there. And there's a knot right on the edge of it there. <laughs> So, uh, Terry Hooper, did Shelley also live in Shipley? Or no, did, did, sorry, I'm not sure quite what he's saying. Did Shelley also lived in Shipley? So either he did or did he? He was something to do with the windmill at, Shep at Shipley, wasn't he? If I remember right, but I'm not. History was never my best. Wasn't my worst, but it was never my best. Because Shipley Mills had quite a few famous people around there, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it's a nice angle for cutting. I can pick up the cut there with about half a mil and gradually increase it. Douglas has decided that Wayne planted the seed for the tree. Chris Dodds agrees with him. <laughs> or, or Chris Dodds actually says, you could be right, spelled Y-E-W. Right. I'm just concerned that the edge, that's better, was a bit thick. You see I've just run a drop of super glue in there, which is why it's darkened in the past. That's that section is a natural bark inclusion, um, nothing in there. So I think I'm going to try and do a parting cut across the end, passing cut across the end, just to see if it will square up a fraction. Camera's in the way, treading on a tool rest. Ugh. That's better. Oh, Sid's repurposing is in. Oh, I missed him. Oh, Sid. Another Aussie, Dave. I believe. And David Nickel.
nearly there. Right, that's round. Oh. <laughs> I was leaning over, so it wasn't the most comfortable no, not, cut. No, not the easiest place to get to, yeah. In actual fact, that's a bloody good cut across there. Very nice finish. That's shiny. Good. So, I think... Got that right, then. Yeah. I think what we can do is come back out and get the scraper on the bottom just to see if I can true that up a fraction. Mm -hmm. so I'm not happy with that finish. It's a bit ridgy. So, go back in a fraction. Sid's repurposing says, yes, and only Aussie, but with pommy blood. Uh -huh. Dad, was, Dad was from Eastbourne. Very nearly England. Yeah. So, got a baby inch and a half negative rake <laughs> scraper. Um, see what we can achieve with this. So, I'm going just a tad above centre. And it, it is slightly radiused. I think that camera just shows it yep. for that. So I'm not looking at running the corners in and stabbing it with a corner. The beauty of this one is for me, I can actually put it on the wood and rock the handle and get a, a decent cut. Just got a little ridge just there, which again, I don't think you can pick up on the camera, but me standing 15 inches away from it, I can. Yeah. It's going to be slow work, guys, but uh, masterpieces were never created overnight. Robo's pointing out that the bevel is on the edge of the tool rest. Yeah, so I know. So you might like to move it out. <laughs> I've also done the opposite and turned it over. That works. Because it works as well. Sometimes better. But you never know. See what we've got. That's uh, 100% better. I think it's going to look quite get, nice uh, when it's done. Yeah, I think I'm going to get the uh, get Drilly's niece out. Yeah. Let her have a go and uh, see what we can do. So it's an angle drill. That I've had for a good few many years works for me. Chris, Chris does said with, with that much wood, you must be up to your ankles in shavings. Uh, I'm above my shoe. Yeah, I believe it. I'm letting the paper do the work. I'm not forcing it. I don't want to generate heat as this is you. To generate heat, you get shakes in it. So what I, I tend to do is I'll do a bit, work around, do a bit more, and then come back. So I've started at 80 grit. I'm 
got the dust extractor sucking away. I've got a mask on. And it's starting to look quite respectable. You can still see one or two little lines on there. So before I convert to a piece of 120, Got a little, you can just see it up my finger there. The colour change it needs to be sanded a bit tighter. So it's not taking a massive amount of sanding. I'm not. Like I say, putting a lot of weight on the, the paper and letting the, the pad and the drill do the work. That's nearly still just there. It's nearly shifted all of the turning marks that mark I'm trying to sand out is actually a bit of bruising where the peel of the tool the bevel rub just a little bit there it's right where the transition between coming in and going round which is why I tend to cut at a bit of an angle which reduces the heel rub but there's just a little bit of a mark there one more pass and that should see that cleaned up And that's gone. I can see that. I can see that's disappeared as it's turning. So that was 80. Go on to 120. Wipe my glasses off. Bear with me, guys. Surprising how dusty this is, and you don't realise. Straight on to 120. What I'll do now is I'll put it in forward. Okay. And on something this big, it's quite uh, handy to be able to do that. So I'm equaling out or balancing out the sanding marks from previously. Don't forget to give Keith thumbs up. He's, uh, as, as Chris Dodd said, Keith, you need a lot of these thumbs up just for thinking about turning that. So for bravery. <laughs> well, no, it's, if, uh, it's having the tools. <coughs> oh, it's having the tools and the lathe that's got enough power to spin the wood. And the experience, yep. Yeah. Yes, I wouldn't say it was a beginner's project, but having been turning 30 odd years, um, I don't class myself quite as a beginner.
So what I'm doing is hand sanding, but with the, with the aid of the drill. Uh, I must admit, I'm not over impressed with these pads, but uh, I've got them, so I'm going to use them. And I'll take the pad off and do it by, by hand, which seems to give me a better result just there. I can see sawdust coming off now, yeah. which I couldn't before. Uh, I can see the mark. I could see the mark. Now the mark's gone. So hopefully, uh, just a little bit of. A little bit of torn grain just there. I could leave it. But, uh, I won't be able to easily remount this once I started to hollow it. So I'd rather get a good a finish as I can. David Nichols asking, he says that he arrived late. How is that piece of wood attached on the lathe and how did he get it balanced? I cut it fairly true on the bandsaw. So true, in fact, that it was only about eighth of an inch out. And remarkably well balanced, yeah. Yeah, yeah it wasn't um, balanced as such because of here there was quite a big inclusion and all that's left is just that bit of dead bra dead branch there that i've just picked out with my thumbnail and there's a dead branch there there's two more branches just there so um yes it was a funny old bit of wood but uh, it was reasonable and acceptable to put on the back's running quite true this was processed for me on site because there was in excess of two ton of you which I bought. So I had a guy come out and plank it up for me. And that ended up as um, two, three and four inch thick planks. That was stored in a mate's garage that cost me a couple of boards but uh, it was well worth it uh, he got rid of the garage where he wanted the space and actually he got rid of it it was a council garage and uh, so i had to take it out so i've got the remainder of it at home there isn't a lot left because a lot of it has been given away, donated to various causes, turners around the world. There's another Australian come in, Jay Wooden Things are you? How's Hello, it Jay. hanging, folks? Hanging well. Fred Gilliver says, hello, Jay, hanging about right. Mm -hmm. uh, Question from... Two. Go Sorry. On. Question from Terry. Could you not put a relief grind on the back of the main grind? Well, on the bowl gouge? I imagine so. Yeah, it doesn't say, but... But like that. You can almost like that relief there. grind you've got, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nearly all my bowl gouges and spindle gouges come with a relief grind. I find it so useful, but even with a relief grind, you can still get a bit of um, bruising. And I think what it was, <coughs> it was user error. I was trying to hold the chisel on so it didn't bounce. And consequently, 
I managed to bruise it. So, not the first time I've bruised a bit of wood. I don't suppose it'll be the last either. No. no. It's so easily done without you actually realising that you've yeah. done it. Absolutely. Particularly on something this size. Breath of fresh air. And the sun's out. Well, almost. <laughs> the workshop door open for a bit. It's pulled quite a lot of uh, dust into the air. So which one do I want? I meant to fire that up earlier on. But a wall mounted fan. Every bit helps them. Yeah. Yeah. Got a little bit of marking just there. So, I've still got the dust extractor. Yeah, that's working. So, gently sand this out. This is just with 240. I think this is as much growth, deformity as an age as it is anything else. I don't think it was tearing. I think it's where the wood is starting to get old, go rotten. I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So quick hand sand as I can. As, as Robbo says, it is always operator error. Laugh out yeah. loud. Yep. Yeah. He's right, though. He's right. And we'll do I it. I admit to it. Yeah, I admit to it. I'd rather admit to it and tell you why I've got those marks and how you can avoid them, possibly. So this Doug, is just going over it with 240. Doug Miller and, says and when you're on... When you're on that far side, the blank looks really huge. Um, it is. Cam camera angle, I assume. I, th I don't think it is camera angle. I think it is really huge. Uh, TJ turning. Terry's in. Hello, Hello Terry. Keith and Andy. And all, sorry I'm late, he says. Stand in the corner. It's not no. Friday. No, we don't do that. We don't, <laughs> no, we do, don't that. do that. No, we don't do that. No. no. We're far no. too nice for that. <laughs> Whatever time Welcome, you want Terry. to come along and insult us, that's fine. <laughs> so. Mark, the gentleman would turn us in. Hello, Mark. Hope you're feeling a bit better, mate. So my normal finish will be shellac, which has settled a bit. This is normal shellac sanding sealer, thinned down with meths. As it's got meths, oh, pull that down a minute. As it's got meths in it, it will stop fairly fluid. So I can whack it on, wipe a bit off, if I can get the lid off. Yep. And this will now start to come to life. So what I can do is my shellac is to actually two birds in one stone. A lot of people now will wipe their wood over with meths. Um, I don't need to. I'm wiping it over and sealing it all in one hit. And wiping it off before it dries. Oh, Brian at Hartwood Turn is coming. Something must have finished because they're all coming in at once. Hello, oh, Brian. How's your uh, knee? Was it your knee that you damaged yesterday? Got kicked by your horse or something? I don't know. I come in on the end of a conversation and I couldn't quite work out 
Oh, you've done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I say, through using the shellac well thinned down, I can do it in sections so I don't have to try and get it on with a four inch brush or whatever and keep a wet edge. I can do a third of it and wipe it down. Jigsy Shed's come in. Hi, everyone. Hello, Jigs. Oh, you haven't missed a great deal of entertainment, apart from uh, <laughs> me soldiering on. Chris Dodd, one. Chris Dodd says, I don't think there's room in any of Keith's corners, so they can't stand in the corner, so that's that. No, we don't need <laughs> to worry about that. No, but your corners are very full. Yes. So there's the difference between edge and centre. You can certainly see a difference in colour. I like that mark, those markings. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wipe that bit off. It's not as in your face as, as you sometimes can be, but that's, that's quite subtle. No. I like it. Well, um, if you like this, definitely go and watch Emma when she does her live. I will do, yeah. So I can't remember. I think it's the 29th, so that will be a week, uh, week Saturday. Um, it's off the same tree, but hers is a lot prettier. So she pieces, yeah. Even if she only stands five foot ten and a half, four foot ten and a half, whichever it is. <laughs> Douglas Mungham has asked a question. He says, "Andy H, would the bruising be classed as burnishing?" Uh, yes, in the right circles, yes. <laughs> so while that's drying, I'll keep talking. And hunt for the Yorkshire grit. I know it's in here somewhere. We we'll use this instead. Get it on cans. That's, that. yep. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's the one. Yeah, that's it. Yep, <laughs> done that. Brian does it best. Yep. Uh, <laughs> So apply it, apply it liberally. But, uh, not too liberally because it takes oh, too long to work it in and get it off. I'm too tight yeah. to put it on liberally. Yeah, well, as I have to buy my own, yeah, I'm absolutely. not privileged to be uh, supported by anyone. Not that I'm wishing to be, but... Uh, no, we're independent. Has yeah. its advantages. Yeah. Try not to work too much into these knot holes and inclusions. I don't want it to go in there and then have to try and pick it out. So just going quickly around the outside. So that's all had a coat. Now I can start to work in. Chicks has just asked how big it is. It's 22 and a half inches diameter, three and a quarter inches thick. And that's going to be more or less the finished dimensions because it was pretty parallel to start with. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. as warped as some bits I've turned. Uh, that's all, all had a coat of Yorkshire grit. And seeing as that's all I've got, I'll put the lid on so I don't uh, put it on the floor. So put it in forward, turn it on, nice and slow. It might be too slow. That's about half the speed that it was traveling around at. So just going to work this in. 
That's one question I've been waiting for, which has just come up uh, from David Nickel. There's no you in Kentucky. Will that platter be food safe? It will be finished with an oil inside. So um, I wouldn't want to specifically eat off of it because of you being toxic. But I would quite happily store fruit in it. I mean, it is more to be a food plate or fruit plate than an eating bowl. So as I can't get a lot of speed on this, I tend to do a bit in forward, a bit in reverse, working it in. I can't get enough speed to melt the beeswax in as far as perhaps we would like. But uh, if this was only six inch diameter, you could uh, you could spin this quite happily at a thousand. I don't think I've turned anything much above about 250-300. But the peripheral speed in feet or inches per minute is equivalent to a uh, six inch bowl, I would think. It's three and a third times the speed that it would be going if it was smaller so if it was if it was traveling at 250 in the center on a six inch bowl and you were happy with that and this was traveling at 250 the equivalent outside speed would be somewhere around seven eight hundred there is a definitive method of working it out but uh, that means maths interesting maths re response to um david's comment about not having you in kentucky doug miller says david we do have you in kentucky it only grows as bushes we typically call it taxis yeah the uh, um, latin name is taxis baccata yeah they obviously use the latin name not 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 you But obviously they don't have big trees the way we do. No. Mostly in churchyards. Well, well, we planted it, or it was planted in churchyards for us to apparently keep the evil devil away. That's right, yep. Copper L turnings in, says sorry he's late. That's uh, Roy, isn't it? Uh, Rob, is it? Rob. I think. Richard RJK Spinning was just said hi, Rob. So I assume that's it. Yeah, that's the fine then. <laughs> I'll go by Rob. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the best at names. I even forget my own at times. Right, that's worn that piece of paper out, so I've got to start again. I haven't quite worked all the grit in. It's getting there has used not very um, absorbent wood and I don't want to get heat into the wood to <laughs> make it split Sorry. Chris, Chris Dodds re reflecting on the comment about it looking huge says Keith is just shrinking in his old age yeah that as well <laughs> yeah. if only you knew there was a question and I've lost it, but I'll find it again. It's on there somewhere, mate. Well, Keith, could you use a buffer on a drill? Uh, Douglas Munn. You could do. Um, I don't know quite what it would achieve on Yorkshire Grit on something like this. It's still coming off. You can You can see it on the paper. Um, the danger would be bad to, now. to generate too much heat, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah as I'm so. travelling three times the speed on the outside that I am six inches out, I don't want to generate any heat. 
because you will soon let me know that I've got it too hot. Oh, yes. It does split very readily. Straight through the middle. Oh. I just, well, this would just shake. And every single knot on us. Yeah, every single knot would, would produce its own rash of, of cracks. Terry Hooper's just come in with a comment. All you is very poisoning to animals and used in English longbows. Yep. All these little bits of information. It's a history lesson in the making, isn't it? It is. It is. I, I, it's one of the bits of interest that I do. I, I sort of think about from time to time when I'm in the mood. Yep. But there's, there's a lot of. I mean, these you know these bits of wood that we're turning have have seen a lot of history. It's been around a oh. long time, most of it. This could be 600 years old, if not long older. Mm -hmm. yeah, could well be, this wasn't yeah. the centre of the tree. The centre of the tree, um, that was was too big to go through his saw miser, and that cuts 40 inches. Oh, blimey. <laughs> so um, mm. it was a bit smaller than 40 inches diameter in the, the middle. TJ Turning's got to go. Thanks, Terry, for stopping by, mate. His wife's just had a new knee fitted, so he's got to go and pick her up. Oh, he was just, he said that the other night, I believe. It uh, was mentioned somewhere, yeah. 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 Hope she's uh, well and recovering, Terry. Best yeah. wishes to her, mate. Very successful, up usually, which is nice. It's reassuring. It can be. I know someone that's not had a good experience on that. It doesn't always go right, that's right. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. Right, this is taking a little bit longer to get rid of the Yorkshire grit. What are we? We're one, one hour 20. I think what I'm going to do, guys... Is call this a two parter and finish this another day. Yes, we're one hour seventeen, so yep, yep. Um I know Andy's got to go out. I've got to go out as well. I'm I'm, I'm going to see Les who is actually watching this so he'll know All right, okay. He'll know when I'm able to come. So So yeah, I've got to go out as well. I've uh, got to go and get some gas so we can have dinner tonight we seem to have run out oh dear. of propane as i cook by propane over here so i think what i'm just going to do is just finish working this off and by yeah, doing it that'd be the outside practice. done wouldn't it yep yeah yeah and we'll program the inside in another day guys Give you a chance to shovel some shavings out. Yeah, yeah. Make make room for it. <laughs> it's actually not too bad. No. no, there'll be a bit more from inside, I suppose. I don't know, not much. It will be, no. as, be about the bit same more. from the inside. Yep, yep. So, well, that's that's me clean on the outside now. So, looks lovely. You can see the nice shine around here. That is a feature of you, isn't it? It does. Yep. It shines up beautifully. It feels so lovely. Give you a bit better view. I can creep it back a bit further now. So there is the best that I can show you the outside. So you can see why I was fighting. I'm just going to need to get the brush in here. There's a little sure. bit of Yorkshire grit stuck in there and in there. So, sounds like someone's got a coffee board out. Can I hear you stirring a coffee, mate? No, not me. All right. It sounded like no. someone was stirring a coffee. It, it did. There okay. was a strange noise, and I think it mm. came from in here, in here somewhere, but I don't know where okay. from. Well, I haven't done a thing. <laughs> if I've got to say so, that's quite a nice finish on there. It's gorgeous. Oh, Absolutely lovely. Yep. Uh, yeah. Look forward might, to seeing the rest of it. Yeah, I might put a work in progress picture up on the on the tubes. But I'm well, being one hour hour and a half in basically. Um 
So you're you're on next I'm Tuesday wondering. as well, aren't you? No, you're not. Uh, don't know. You've Tw got the calendar. Yeah, twenty seventh. Is it the eighteenth today? Yes, it it's is. the eighteenth today. Your your next one is the twenty seventh and Thursday evening. That's next Thursday. Oh, okay. Might try it next Thursday evening then. When am I next on yeah. Tuesday? Um, oh, not until you've got two Thursdays, and then the next one's fifteenth of June. So it's a month's time. So let's make a start on it uh, next Thursday then. Yeah, so or alternatively, alternatively, you could have mine next Tuesday and I could do the Thursday. Whatever. Whatever suits you. What do you guys want in the chat want to see? Do you want me to see see me finish this off next Tuesday and Andy do Thursday? Or do you want me to uh, rush through and not get it all done because Rich is on, on Thursday so we only get a bare hour and a bit? I'm happy. Andy's That's happy. True. You won't be as pushed, will you? No, I won't be as pushed lunchtime on a lunchtime. No, no, that's true. It, I would prefer to do it over lunchtime. Well, let's do that then. Let's do okay. that. You we'll have, you have next decision. Tuesday, and I'll go for the um, the 27th. There's two of them come up, Sidley and uh, Copper, Terry. Three of them yes. come up with Tuesday, YV, Andrews come up. So I'll do two next Tuesday, guys. So right. ignore what's on um, Forking Bananas website because that would be wrong. I can't keep but, getting him to change it. But there will be something on on, on both days. There will definitely be something on. I'll do something shortish on the Thursday. Yep. Okay. Let me, let me go and bring. Is everybody uh, saying Tuesday? Tuesday, please. Yeah, bring Andy Sorry. back in. Oh, hello. Uh, I've seen him before somewhere. Can. See if I can find myself on here, which I think is... Dig yourself out. Yeah, yeah this one. No, it's not. No. Uh -huh. It's the one with the red no, bag. Number four. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> which, has got a, which has got a green bag in it as well now. Yeah, that's the one. Is yeah, that that's one? it. <laughs> yeah. I might have to go and... Uh, Looks a bit dusty. Yes. Yeah, I might have to tickle it to... Uh... Oh, it's better. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. Let's turn the big sucker off. Because you can't hear it, but I can. So. No, I can't hear a thing. Right. Let's, let's split the screen. He's gone again. Yeah, that's better. So I left it on uh, monitor. So there we are, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, that's for uh... spending an hour and a half with Andy and myself. Yeah, um, thank you. No, it's been 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 an enjoyable hour and a half. I've, it's been some it's, decent chat in there today. Yep, and it's probably the biggest thing I've ever seen turned. So apart from okay, uh, one that I did, but but that was only a flat piece of wood, so mm, that doesn't count. If I can remember, um, I'll get the easel down here for next Tuesday, and I'll bring down my biggest piece. Oh, you huge is, one, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is thirty inches diameter. It's a, uh, it's a cover that we, Sue puts in front of the fireplace because we don't use the fireplace, so she, uses it as a sort of, sort of fire screen. So, I have to try and remember what the wood is then, but it's not the, it's not the best one to turn, but it's a sort of piney, ish wood. It was quite resinous, and it's got a mahoosive knot in the middle, just to make it interesting. Yeah, got to have a challenge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you all, guys. Hopefully all of you are subscribed and you've hit the like button on the way out. But uh, if you hit the don't like button, that's absolutely fine with me. Um, you can't all like everything. We try and put on a display that is different woods that are a bit challenging turning that's a little bit challenging I don't think you've ever seen me do anything really simple um, but Brickhurst has said he's got two thumbs up, thanks mate uh, that's Seth isn't it? Seth, yeah, I missed you coming yeah. Seth, apologies for that 
So, yeah, no standing in the corner because you've been late. We don't believe in that. So we welcome everyone with open arms and uh, appreciate you coming over. So what both Andy and I myself want to do is trying to expand their channel a little bit. I'm creeping up one or two a week, but it is creeping up. Um, so if you can share it out and get it liked, that will be absolutely fine. Even if you don't like it and you put the thumbs down, you know, the algorithm that YouTube use will still say to other people that, uh, you know, it's been watched, you need to watch this sort of thing. This is what you're subscribed to. So you get the, uh, you get the notification. I think oh. Doug, Miller, Doug Miller sums it up quite nicely. Great wood. Well done turning. What's not to like? Thank you. You can, <laughs> you can, you can always find someone that doesn't like something. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, uh, looking forward to part two, David Nichols says, yes, am I? Mm -hmm. um, There's lots of nice comments, so it's good. Mm. Thank you, guys. Bricker, Seth has said he was glad he, I got to partially see it live. You can go back and you can follow it tomorrow morning. I think it will be up on the tubes this bit. And then part two next Tuesday at one o'clock. So it's lunch and nibbles again, guys. So I'm going to say thank you very much to everybody for stopping by and uh, grinning and bearing with us. And uh, I'm going to hit the off button. Bye, so, everybody. Thanks, guys. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>